What's up, everybody? Mama's Razor Blade. You know, I think I speak for everybody on the planet when I say that everybody has a movie they like that everybody hates and a movie they hate that everybody likes. Me, for example? I like the Hotel Transylvania movies, and I'll take it to my grave. Even though most critics hate it, mainly because Adam Sandler and crew are attached to it, I personally don't mind them. For what they are, simple kids' movies. They have nice animation, lots of good jokes, and some genuinely very nice characters. Not all of them, mind you, but like I said, I like them for what they are, simple kid flicks. I also thought Star Wars The Last Jedi was a solid film, despite its issues on and off screen, and that's a movie that just about everybody hated. But okay, okay, you guys want to know the other side of the spectrum. What is a movie that I don't like that everybody else just freaking adores? Yeah, not a fan. So yeah, not only do I not like Big Hero 6, but I really don't like Big Hero 6. Now, that's not me saying I hate it or think it's the worst, I just don't think it's as good as everybody says it is. Now, I know what you all are doing, you guys are typing in your comments right away saying, but Razorblade, it won an Oscar for Best Animated Feature, it's such a good movie, it's so beautiful and stuff like that, how can you possibly hate it? Well, I have a lot of reasons, but... Usually, I get two reasons why people think I'm wrong. The two most common arguments I get about Big Hero 6 are these. Number one, Rotten Tomatoes. As of right now, Big Hero 6 has an 89% on Rotten Tomatoes. Now, I'm not gonna lie, that is a very good score, but Star Wars The Last Jedi has a 90% on Rotten Tomatoes, and the majority of audiences hate that movie. Also, I don't think I need to bring this up, but Boss Baby got nominated for Best Anime Feature last year, and that movie has like, a, what, like a 50% or something? Yeah, so... I don't think Rotten Tomatoes really matters when it comes to the Oscars. Which, speaking of which, number two, the Oscars. Yeah, 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 I get it. Big Hero 6 won Best Animated Feature in 2014. The same year that the Lego Movie got snubbed for it. Which, by the way, let's talk about the Oscars for a second when it comes to animation. They fucking hate it! Ever since the Best Animated Feature Award was created in 2001, only five times has a Disney and Pixar film not won the award. Those five times being 2001 Shrek, 2002 Spirited Away, although that's debatable seeing how Disney has partnered with them, 2005's Wallace and Gromit, The Curse of the Were-Rabbit, 2006 Happy Feet, and 2011's Rango. Aside from those years, every time Disney and Pixar has won that award. Now don't get me wrong, I love Disney and Pixar, I love them with all my heart, but I know I'm not the only one who has noticed this obvious bias. It has been reported throughout the history of the award that judges will not watch all the nominees, or at least the ones they consider to be mere children's fair, or worse, they'll just let their kids vote who they think needs to win. Yeah, that's fucking fair. Jack Black himself actually made a joke once saying this. Each year I do one DreamWorks project, then I take all the money to the Oscars and bet it on Pixar. That should really tell you what's going on here. And you expect me to give Big Hero 6 a pass because it won an award that honestly it may or may not have won fairly? No. Fuck you. That is bullshit. That's not fucking fair. That's like saying, what Don Bluth movie do you like the most? Seeker and M, All Dogs Go to Heaven, or Land Before Time? Well, I've only seen Land Before Time, so that one. Th that's not fucking fair. What about these two movies? Okay, they're good. That's not fucking fair. You can't fucking do that. All right? And the worst part of it is this isn't really Big Hero 6's fault, all right? It, it makes me feel like no movie in the animation category has a fair shot. I mean, it's like... It's like the Oscars just know. It's like they think, oh, that's a Disney movie, so it obviously has to win. And that's not fucking fair, all right? And look, if a Disney movie won the Oscar fairly and it deserves an Oscar, then I'll be happy for it. I'm like, yeah, good job. That was a great movie. I loved it. Right? Disney's Inside Out, Disney's Coco. Well, that's Pixar, technically, but you get it. Bottom line, those are great movies, and I'm glad they won the Oscar. But at the same time, knowing that the Oscars are not treating animation fairly, that hurts. That really hurts, and this is coming from someone who adores animation. Meanwhile, movies like Boss Baby are getting nominated, while movies like The Lego Movie and Kimi no Nawa are getting snubbed and not even looked at. That is not fucking fair. It's bullshit, and that's why I fucking hate the Oscars when it comes to animation. So if you expect me to get Big Hero 6 a pass because it won an Oscar for an award category that honestly may have not been fairly judged, then fuck you. That is not even a good argument. Alright? 
That doesn't even that doesn't even bowl well for the movie itself. I mean, for fuck's sake, Suicide Squad won an Oscar for best makeup for this shit that honestly wouldn't pass in the eighties as good effects. But I'm I'm rambling on. I'm I'm just going on a fucking blind rant here. Okay, this has nothing to do with Big Hero Six. I just I wanted to get that out because. I fucking hate the Oscars when it comes to animation. They treat it so unfairly, and it's not fucking right. I want to love the movies that won, but at the same time, I don't think they're getting a fair shot. No matter how good they are, all animated movies that are nominated need to be given a fair shot. And those that don't deserve to be nominated don't need to be nominated. <sighs> but, yeah, I, I made my point clear. So, <sighs> let's... I just want to get that out there because I know you guys have your arguments against why you love this movie, and if you do, then whatever. I'm just saying I have my reasons to why those arguments are bullshit. All right? So, with that being said, let's talk about Big Hero 6 and why I don't like it. So the movie begins with our main character named Hiro Hamada, who is doing something called bot fighting. And I'm not gonna lie, it's actually kinda cool. The animation is slick and fast-paced, the fight is visually interesting, and I'm not gonna lie, that little bot is kinda cute. But before Hiro can get his little face punched in, his older brother Tadashi saves him, and we then get a butt-ton of exposition. You graduated high school when you were 13, and this is what you're doing now? Yeah, this is a good time for this. Bot fighting is illegal. You're gonna get yourself arrested. Yeah, this is a good time for this. The two of them are arrested, however, and their end cast has to bail them out, where we then get even more exposition. For 10 years, I have done the best I could to raise you. Have I been perfect? Do I know anything about children? No! Should I have picked up a book on parenting? Probably! I had to close up early because of you two felons. On beat poetry night. When are you gonna start doing something with that big brain of yours? What? Go to college like you? Oh my god! Is there anything that you're not gonna tell me about these two characters? Are you gonna tell me when their birthdays are now? Or how about their favorite colors? Or what about their favorite flavor of jelly? God, who the fuck cares about that shit? I understand why exposition is needed, okay? You can't show everything in a movie, but it needs to be well-placed and straight to the point. This movie is just stating things that either don't need to be said right now or at all. Oh, what would mom and dad say? I don't know. They're, they're gone. They died when I was three, remember? No, really? Your parents are dead? I never would have guessed that. I thought y'all were just living with your aunt for the lols. This opening cares more about telling us who these characters are rather than showing us. The movie started out just fine, but then when Tadashi showed up, suddenly it was tell, don't show, which was completely unnecessary. So, not wanting his brother to get into even more trouble, Tadashi takes him to his school where we then meet all of his bland, one-dimensional friends. They're all fun and you know it! There's Emo Bitch, OCD Guy, Gender Swap Dexter from Dexter's Laboratory, and of course, who could forget TJ Miller's character from How to Train Your Dragon. Okay, now you all know that last one's true. Honey Lemon? Go-Go? Wasabi? I spilled wasabi on my shirt one time, people! One time! Okay, but, like, what are their real names? Like, seriously, am I the only one that thinks that's kind of weird? I mean, don't get me wrong, they can have the nicknames that they want, but, like, what's their real names? And don't tell me what they are from the comics, because obviously this is not the comic. Tadashi decides to show off his invention to hero named Baymax, who I will admit is the best part of this movie. Imagine C-3PO meets Big Bird from Sesame Street, someone who's really annoying meets somebody who cares a little too much, and you honestly have something genuinely cute and funny. There, I gave this movie a compliment, okay? Now back to shitting on it! Burning the midnight oil, Mr. Hamada? You must be hero. Botfighter, right? When my daughter was younger, that's all she wanted to do. He's the villain. Yeah, that was another thing I hated about this movie. The marketing was pure shit. Because one, it blatantly gave away the fact that Tadashi dies in the beginning. Why the fuck would you even do that? People keep saying Tadashi's not really gone. As long as we remember him. And two, when you really think about it, it also kind of gives away who the villain is. The movie's marketing failed to show us only two characters, Robert Callahan and Aleister Cray. When people saw this movie for the first time, that means it was the first time they saw these two characters. Now usually I'm fine with stuff like that because I hate it when a movie's trailer spoils things for me, but when a movie is trying to build up a twist villain and so much of the movie is dedicated to figuring out who it is, when there's only two characters to guess from that we haven't seen yet, and Disney having a boner for twist villains nowadays, it's pretty easy to guess who the villain's gonna be. I was able to figure out who the villain was going to be in the first 20 minutes, and for a movie that is so dedicated to trying to figure out who the twist villain's going to be, that really takes the wind out of your sails when the answer is finally revealed. 
So Hiro is convinced by Tadashi to go to college with him, and we then get a montage of the two working together. Wait, wait a minute, whoa, did I still the fast forward button? Hey, no, stop, stop, stop fast forwarding, what the fuck? Is that how the movie goes? What the hell's wrong with this movie? Why in the fuck is this movie fast forwarding through all of this? It makes no sense. It's almost like the movie doesn't want to show us the relationship between Hiro and Tadashi. And wait a minute, the other characters are there too! What the hell? Why are you fast forwarding through all this? This is your chance to show some character to these characters. Why are you fast forwarding through all this? It's like a cock tease. It's like, you got some great characters here, but you don't want to show us these characters. You just want to get to the... Fuck, I don't even know what you're trying to get to. It's stupid! So Hiro has a chance to get into college should he create a great experiment and show it off at a convention center. His friends notice how nervous he is, though, and give him some helpful advice. Relax, Hiro. Your tech is amazing. Tell him, Gogo. Stop whining. Woman up. Yeah, but man up is a sexist term, right? That's why you said that? Yeah, you had to, you had to make a statement. You know, woman power and so on, but... If you say man up, you're a sexist bastard. How dare you? But no, saying woman up, that's fine. Yeah. I love double standards so much. Don't you? So Hero presents his invention, and it is revealed that they are called microbots. Thousands of tiny little machines that can do whatever you want. I think what I want them to do... They do it. Remember that statement, okay? Remember that, because it is one of the reasons why this movie is so goddamn boring. So Hero's presentation is a success, and it even attracts the attention of Alistair Cray, a corporate CEO who wants to buy Hero's work. You can continue to develop them, or you can sell them to a man who's only guided by his own self-interest. But you should know, Mr. Cray has cut corners and ignored sound science to get where he is. That's just not true. I wouldn't trust Craytech with your microbots, or anything else. Well, gee, I... I'm really wondering who the villain of the movie could be right now. I mean, it could be anybody. I mean, maybe it's that asshole Cray. I mean, can't you just tell how much of a stuck-up asshole he is? I mean, just look at him. Look how scummy and greedy he looks and stuff like that. It's totally going to be him. You're laying it on really thick, movie. Trying really hard to get someone who already knows you're full of shit. No. Bad movie. Bad. I look forward to seeing you in class. Yeah! Dinner is on me! Yes, yes! Nothing is better than free food! Aunt Cass? Unless it's moldy. We'll, uh, we'll catch up, okay? What? What do you mean you'll catch up? Like, what do you mean? Where, where are you going? D don't you see your friends over there? Look at them, they're all ready to leave! Like, no, they're probably tired, hungry, ready to go to bed. Like, no, seriously, where the hell are you going? Yeah, for some reason, Hiro and Tadashi have to have this moment right now. Why? It makes, like, no sense at all. Like, they can have this moment at home. They don't have to do this right here, right now. The only reason they're having this moment right here at the college is so that Tadashi can blow up. Oh, which, by the way, spoilers! So, yep, Tadashi dies. And what was supposed to be a gut-wrenching scene kind of falls flat because Hiro and Tadashi had no more reason to be there. Good, good, let the hate flow through you. I'm sorry, but this just feels really lazy. Tadashi and Hiro had no real reason for still being at the college, so Tadashi just running in there just feels really forced. Why not instead have Hiro and Tadashi still be in the building, or Hiro forgot something and has to run to the building real quick when the fire starts? That way, Tadashi goes in to save Hiro instead of Callahan. I mean, that would have been way more interesting for Tadashi to save his younger brother as opposed to the teacher who we barely met. So, it would have added so much more. Let's face it, guys. Tadashi's been about as flat of a character as, well, the rest of the characters outside of Hiro. He's just kind of been the nice older brother, and that's about it. There's nothing really more to his character than that. But saving his brother and actually seeing it happen would have done more for his character. And I know he's still technically trying to save somebody here, but again, it would have meant way more should it have been Hiro instead of Callahan. But no. Instead, Tadashi just runs into a building to save somebody we barely even know, and that's it. Tadashi was only written to die, and it just feels lazy to me. Littlefoot's mom had less screen time than Tadashi did, and she was such a great character. She was wise, she was loving, and we actually saw her sacrifice herself for Littlefoot's sake. Yeah, she died, but you felt the weight of her death. You know what it meant. 
But here, it's just empty, because Tadashi was such a weak character, and the setup was completely forced. Tadashi's death was nothing more than a plot device meant to teach the movie's message. Which isn't a bad message, mind you. In fact, quite the contrary, it's a great message to teach kids. It's just that I've seen other movies teach this message way better, and I wish that this movie had a better way of going about it. And would you look at that. Despite taking an explosion right to his face, Hero is completely fine. I mean, come on guys, seriously? I mean, look, I don't want the guy to start gushing blood or anything like that, but look, in Kung Fu Panda 2, Poe took a cannon right to the face and look at him. He looks fucked up as shit, but here, nah, Hero doesn't even get so much of a scratch, not a scuff mark or anything. Like, come on, would it kill you to have just a little bit of grit movie? Just a little bit? So yeah, Tadashi is dead, and for the next few weeks, Hero is upset about it. To be fair though, this is where the movie is at its strongest. The depiction of grief is genuinely well done here, it doesn't need to be spelled out, the visuals tell us everything we need to know, it does genuinely work here. The only problem I really have with this movie is the fact that it just wants to be something it's not, a superhero movie. If the movie was more about Hero and Baymax just trying to deal with the grief of losing Tadashi, then I think the movie would have been way stronger in the end. So, when Hero accidentally stubs his toe, Baymax wakes up and tries to help him. Hello, I am Baymax, your personal healthcare companion. Ow. On a scale of one, Ow. on a scale, ah. on a scale, no. on a scale of one to ten, <laughs> on a scale of one to ten, how would you rate your pain? I will scan you for injuries. Don't scan me. Scan complete. Unbelievable. Diagnosis? Puberty. Whoa, what? You should expect an increase in body hair, especially on your face, chest, armpits, and- Thank you, that's enough. Yeah, we blew up somebody a few minutes ago, but talking about puberty? Now that's just a little too far for this PG-rated movie. When Hero discovers one of his microbots survived the fire, Baymax, thinking it will help Hero, decides to see where it's trying to go. So I was about to say this is about as good as the animation is going to get in this movie. Because it does. I'm not going to lie though, the city of San Francisco does look very vibrant. Busy, a lot like a real city. Unfortunately, that's about as good as the animation this movie is going to get. We'll go more into this later, but just know that the animation is at the best just fine. I told you, it's broken. It's not trying to go... Huh? Fall from this height could lead to bodily harm. Oh no, excuse me while I let out some air. Yes. Get it? It's like a fart joke, except... No, actually, it's just like a fart joke. It's obnoxious, annoying, goes on for way too long, and isn't funny. At all. So when Hero discovers that someone stole his invention and is now making more of them, he decides to go to the police. And then we get about two minutes of unfunny filler that goes absolutely nowhere. But hey, at least it made for a cute trailer, right? So, realizing that the fire wasn't an accident, Hero decides to go after the guy and gives Baymax some upgrades. Hammer fist! Sidekick! Knife hands! Back kick! Gummy bears! Get it? It's random. That's why it's so funny. <laughs> no, it's obnoxious and stupid. Also, gummy bears taste like rubber. So, here on Baymax go to try and find the bad guy, and also, does anybody else notice that something is missing here? Oh yeah, Big Hero 6? You know, for a movie called Big Hero 6, there's surprisingly not a lot of Big Hero 6 in it. We're at the 40 minute mark here, and Big Hero 6 isn't even remotely together. In Guardians of the Galaxy, everybody was together in the first 10 minutes. But here, it takes almost a whole fucking hour of this hour and a half long movie for everybody to come together. Like, what the hell is up with that? But finally, at the 46 minute mark, does Hero's bland friends finally show up. And for some reason, Hero tries to lie about what's going on. Dude, what are you doing out here? N nothing, just, just out for a walk. Helps my pubescent mood swings. Is that Baymax? Just tell them about what's going on, okay? You have no reason to lie to them! The villain discovers them, however, leading to a chase scene ripped right out of a Fast and Furious movie. Why are we stopped? The 
is red. There are no red lights in a car chase. There's also like nobody in the street at all, so who cares? Yeah, in a city called San Francisco, I'm surprised that there is literally not one fucking person seen throughout this entire chase scene. No traffic, no bystanders, no police, fucking nobody. It's so fucking weird. This place is based off of San Francisco and Tokyo, two very popular and heavily populated cities. All right, even if it's like two in the morning, there's still gonna be people out there. Not one fucking person is seeing this? I guess everybody just decided to go to bed early tonight. Let's not jump to conclusions. We don't know. He's trying to kill us. Cars! He's trying to kill us! Really? You you threw a car at them. I mean, sure, that'll that'll get the job done and all, but I mean I just okay, let's talk about this for a second. Um, you have thousands, maybe even millions of these little machines that can do, as the movie said earlier, whatever you think of. I think what I want them to do, they do it. So, with that in mind, what are you going to do with these things? These th millions of things that you can do literally whatever the hell you want with. The answer? Nothing! Fucking nothing! They do nothing with this at all! I mean, look what he does in the movie. Look what he fucking does. He surfs on it a little bit. He reaches for them sometimes. He threw one fucking car. That's about it. They, they don't do anything with this. You can make this the stupidest shit you've ever seen. He can make a giant fucking T-Rex. He can make an army of ninjas. He can create an army of cyborg turkeys for all I fucking care. Bottom line, the imagination is the fucking limit with this guy. You can do whatever. You can do fuck all with this guy. And it could be the funniest or coolest shit in the world. And you do nothing. Fucking nothing! My god. This is like making Jafar the genie at the end of Aladdin, but he decides to eat a fucking raspberry pudding pop for some reason instead of trying to take over the universe. It's the stupidest fucking thing ever! Oh my god, it's like... In my opinion, this guy has got to be the worst fucking villain in Disney history. There, I fucking said it, okay? Because he has the coolest weapon ever and he does fucking nothing with it. It's wasted potential. It sucks! God damn it! It fucking sucks, it really does! Fuck. But, despite not doing anything cool with the microbots, he manages to cause the kids to crash into the ocean. Whoa, 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 movie. No, 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 no. You can't just skim that little detail. How the fuck did Baymax get him out of the car? Seriously, they were trapped under there, the seatbelts were holding him in place, they were trapped. They are drowning right now, okay? Unless one of them had a knife, which you just conveniently decided to leave out because the movie doesn't care about any characters that aren't fucking Hero Baymax, then I'm gonna say it. These kids are fucking dead. End of story. So after miraculously escaping the car, they all head to Fred's house where they find out he's rich. And also Stanley's his dad. <laughs> yeah, in TJ Miller's dreams. You gotta be kidding me. If I wasn't just attacked by a guy in a kabuki mask, I think this would be the weirdest thing I've seen today. And there it is, guys. The only joke in this movie that legitimately made me laugh. Every other joke in this movie is just really forced and random. Because this movie thinks that random is funny. The guy in the mask was carrying something with this symbol on it. Apprehending the man in the mask will improve Hero's emotional state. Apprehend him? We don't even know who he is. Uh, are you sure that's the right response for that line? I think the proper response would be this. Apprehend him? Are you out of your fucking mind? You're 14 years old and we almost died! But no, that would actually give this person some character outside of just blindly following Hero for the rest of the movie. And that's another problem with this movie. Every other character in Big Hero 6 that isn't Hero or Baymax has no reason to do any of this. I mean, they claim to have a reason, but it feels so forced. Tadashi Hamada was our best friend. But what does that mean, okay? Who is Tadashi to any of you? Hell, who are any of you individually? In Guardians of the Galaxy, everybody had their own reason to fight. Peter wanted to save the galaxy just because he didn't want to be an asshole. What are you, some saint all of a sudden? What has the galaxy ever done for you? Why would you want to save it? Because I'm one of the idiots who lives in it! Gamora wanted to stop her father Thanos. Or 
Drax wanted to avenge his family who Ronan killed. Ronan murdered my wife, Ove. And my daughter, Camaria. He slaughtered them where they stood. And he laughed! Rocket wanted to save his new friends. Oh, what the hell? I don't got that long a lifespan anyway. Now I'm standing. You all happy? We're all standing up now. Bunch of jackasses standing in a circle. And Groot, well, let's face it, guys. Groot was the most awesome part of that movie. <laughs> Groot is ten times cure of the Baymax, and I will fight you on the street over it. Bottom line, guys, every character outside of Hero and Baymax are only becoming heroes because the plot demands it. It doesn't feel natural at all. I don't know who these people are and have little to no connection with them. Even their connection with Tadashi was just skipped over earlier in the movie. So what should feel like a triumphant moment really just feels forced, empty, and doesn't excite me in the slightest. We're gonna be superheroes! I'm Zap. Oh goody, a Fall Out Boy song. Maybe this will make up for the lack of character. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, who the yes. hell lets you in? Sure, yes. you let him in. They're the best, they're the best man that ever lived. I cannot believe they are actually. Hey, Bammy Man, maybe wait for a second. Oh my god. Bammy Man. This is so amazing. This Bammy is so amazing. Man. I... Stop! This isn't about you, man. Or your love for Fall Out Boy, okay? Alright? This is my review. I'm reviewing a movie I think is really overrated. Alright? So just take your love for Fall Out Boy someplace else, okay? I'll let you know if I need your help with another Bigfoot movie or something. I'm sorry, Razor. Uh... Hearing one of my favorite bands in a Disney movie makes me go a little bit band crazy. Yeah, okay, thanks. Bye. You may proceed with your review. Yeah, bye. I'm gonna go listen to Mania now. Oh, thank God he's gone. Jesus Christ. Overall, the song's fine, I guess. But let's talk about the superhero costumes and why they're all, honestly, really fucking stupid. Oh, come on! One of them has fucking frisbees as a weapon! Are you fucking kidding me? What is she supposed to even do with that thing? Like, seriously, here, villain, catch! Like, what do you think that's gonna do? This is the equivalent of locking Jet Li in a room full of monkeys, giving him a banana to fight with, and giving all the monkeys AK-47s. I don't care how badass Jet Li is, that is not gonna end well for him. Then you have Honey Lemon, who has a purse, which basically holds the entire periodic table in it. Which means that she could basically make a nuke whenever she feels like. God, imagine that scenario. One more move, motherfucker, and I'm taking the whole country with me! Also, what keeps the chemical balls from just popping in her hand? Well, funny enough, for a movie that's so dedicated to science and stuff like that, it never explains that fact. So yeah, we'll just pretend that that little ball of acid won't melt her hand away. Yeah, that's fine. That's, that's, that's fine. Fine! Then you have Wasabi, who just has lightsabers. We get it, Disney, you own Star Wars. Now stop fucking it up! Then you have Fred, who honestly has the coolest suit out of all of them, but even then, you can still do way more with him. Why don't have him stick to walls, have x-ray vision, spit acid, have gazer beams, have spines that shoot out, make a fly. There's a lot you can do with this character, you're just, you know, not doing it. Do you seriously not give a shit? But the worst out of all of them has got to be heroes. What does he do? Nothing! Absolutely nothing! Seriously, he doesn't even give himself like a gun or like a knife or something to defend himself with. What happens if he gets separated from Baymax? What then? <laughs> he becomes pretty fucking useless! So Hero decides to test out Baymax's new suit and we then get a fight around the city because all these movies did it. It is just an expression. <laughs> Again, why wasn't the movie about these two? Like, seriously, it should have just been about Hero and Baymax learning to get over Tadashi's death. Seriously, you could have had a bit of a Iron Giant sort of thing going on here, but instead you chose to be a superhero movie that's overall been... meh. 
So, finally, an hour into this hour and a half long movie, Big Hero 6 finally comes together and tracks the villain down to his lair. You see? Random means funny! Automatically, somehow! That's how it works, I think. Right? So after breaking into the base, the team learns that Cray tested a new portal on the island that could teleport people anywhere they wanted. But when the pilot disappears and the portal explodes, the government shut down the project. And he's using your microbots to steal his machine back. Cray's the guy in the mask. <laughs> Baymax, get us out of here. <laughs> Gee, what a little asshole! Seriously, they get a giant rock thrown on top of them, and he doesn't even check to make sure anyone's okay. Like, no, for real. Fred over there could be fucking dead, and Hero could care less. It's like, alright guys, let's go. Fred, stop being a fucking shooby. Told you I'm bringing it back. You see? I told you guys her weapon was fucking useless. You know what would make this fight a lot better? A fire-breathing dragon. Sure wish someone had the ability to just, uh, you know, make that happen, you know? All you have to do is just, uh, you know, think about it and boom. There it would be. It'd be that easy. Over, Cray. P Professor Callahan? Holy fucking shit! No way! So after learning the truth, we get that cliched and forced scene where Hero has to turn evil and try to kill the villain, but oh no, that's the wrong thing to do, despite the fact that Callahan has tried multiple times to kill these kids, already killed Tadashi, and... Yeah, he's kind of a psychopath, really. So, if Hero ended up killing this guy, I don't think it'd be that big of a deal. Hero did nothing wrong, and I'm sticking to it. So after leaving the team behind, not that they fucking matter, Hero heads back home and has an emotional breakdown. Tadashi programmed me to aid him. Tadashi's gone! And this is the first test of my robotics project. Hello, I am Baymax. Stop, 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 stop! <sighs> I'm not giving up on you. You don't understand this yet. But people need you. Oh, man. Wait till my brother sees you. You're gonna help so many people, buddy. So many. Thank you, Baymax. Again, guys, it... It should have just been about these two. If they want to fight crime on the side, then fine, but maybe not have them fight a big supervillain, and instead, just have it be about them coming to term with Tadashi's death. Hell, why not just write out the other four members of Big Hero 6 and make it like the Marvel Cinematic Universe, where they all get their own movie? It'd make hundreds of million dollars and it would have been a lot better. So after realizing his mistake, here when the team learned that Callahan's daughter was the pilot who disappeared and he blames Kray for it. Callahan attacks Kray Tech Industries and prepares to kill him, leading to the final battle between him and Big Hero 6. Oh, would you look at that! Hero got separated from Baymax and is now fucking useless. God, <laughs> who saw that coming? Damn right I did! <laughs> yeah! That'll keep you from mildly annoying me! Seriously though, what the hell were they thinking with that? The heroes turn the tide, however, and begin targeting the bots. So that's really going to be your catchphrase, huh? Wonderful. Our programming prevents us from injuring a human being. You get it? They said that earlier in the movie, so it's deep. 
So, after defeating Callahan, Baymax notices that his daughter is still alive in the portal. Hero and Baymax go in together to discover... A Dr. Seuss amusement park ride? You mean like at Universal Studios? <laughs> no! No, I don't. They find Abigail safe and sound, but Baymax is damaged on the way out. The only way to save Abigail and Hero is for Baymax to stay behind. No! I can't lose you two! Hero, I will always be with you. You chose the most boring, uninspired, and generic way to say goodbye. Sums the whole movie up, basically. So Hero and Abigail make it back okay, Callahan is arrested, and Hero goes to college with his friends. But while in his new office, Hero makes a brilliant discovery. Ow? I am Baymax, your personal healthcare companion. No! Oh, again, why wasn't it just about these two? Damn it! But, in typical Marvel fashion, there is still an after credit scene to watch. Son. Dad. We have a lot to talk about. Like how you're not going to be a part of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. I'm sorry, son. It's just that we're already dealing with one bratty kid. We don't need to deal with five more in another robot, okay? We already had one of those, and you can argue it technically did cause half the universe to be erased by Thanos, all right? But hey, look on the bright side. At least you're going to get your own TV show. Please try to relax. Whoopsie-daisy. Let's do this. I mean, it looks cheap as dirt, but hey, at least it's something, right? EXCELSIOR! And that was Big Hero 6, and... What was that word that the Immortan Joe used in Mad Max Fury Road? Bingo! It really isn't that bad of a movie. In fact, I dare say it's fine. But that's really about it. It's fine. The story is pretty basic, the characters are pretty flat, the twist villain is predictable, and the message, while not badly taught, has been taught better in many other places. It's far from the worst thing I've reviewed, but I guess at the end of the day, it is... harmless. It's bright and colorful, it's got some nice moments here and there, and that's fine. I just think that since this is both a Disney and Marvel film who have been killing it in recent years, they wouldn't make something that's just so... Mediocre. Okay, that's the last time I'm using that joke. Honestly, if you really think about it, Guardians of the Galaxy is just Big Hero 6 done way better. The action's more intense, the characters are more interesting, the jokes are way funnier, and you actually feel the bond between the group. You can relate with them better, you remember them more. Aside from Baymax, I don't remember one character from this movie. Not even Hero. In the end, I guess it's not saying any bad messages, well, almost. Stop whining. One minute. Oh, shut up! If you enjoy it, then no harm done. But, as for me, well, this was nothing more than a big waste of time. My name is Richard Blade, and as always, rock on. And please be nice to me in the comments, okay? I know a lot of you really love this movie, but... No, I don't care. I, I, I just didn't like this movie that much. Rock on. Okay, look, I swear to God, I'm not a psychotic Fall Out Boy fan. I just... Wait, are you finished with the review? Yes! Oh. Okay then, um... Well... I guess, uh... All I have to say really is that- GOODBYE!